Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you your daily Tesla report for Tuesday, July 11th, 2023. Before I click through all the charts and cover the day itself, would love for you to click like, subscribe if you would to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel and share the content with friends and colleagues. Also, check out wickedstocks.com where we offer a full suite of both daily and weekly analytical videos just like this. Daily analysis in the Triple Q and the SPY, weekly analysis in the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, and the Long Bond ETF, the TLT, as well as two individual stock picks a week that you never see on YouTube that cater to the three to five week swing trader, three to five month near term investor always looking for a 20 percent move on the underlying stock and so check out wickedstocks.com here we are weekly bar chart i'll start there we had a buy signal um two four six seven weeks ago when we settled above this 18 month channel top that is now at 191.39 uh, you know, this buy signal, and I can jump to this more concentrated chart here, uh, is anticipated to ultimately yield the 414.49 all-time high from November of 21 you know, over the months ahead, potentially by the end of the year. Now, that potentially becomes expected if we were to settle any week above the 284.01 rising channel top by a 1% margin. But until then, this, this formation has actually acted quite well uh, as anticipated anticipated in containing buying pressures and in fact holding below 28401 will keep the low 190s in reach over the next couple of months. I don't have a clear cut sell signal for that. So it's more of a attainability, not necessarily expected. Now it would be expected, I'm talking 19139 if over the next couple of weeks we were to close below 24902. And so with respect to the 2 to 3 week outlook, I can see say that you know holding below 282.85 will keep this 24902 formation in reach i don't have it illustrated like i would like this is probably a better version of it 282.05 is on the daily chart that which we find on the weekly chart at 284.01 holding below 282.85 will keep 249.02 in reach as a one to two week target now you can see on this chart that we did you know last week close above the 282.85 channel top for a day, but it was not by a 1% margin. And this can happen quite often with these long-term line studies. And that's why I combine the weekly version of 284.01 with the daily at 282.85. Uh, a 1% violation of 284.01 this week is 286.85. So that is really our magic number as we move into August, September, October. It would be a settlement at the end of this week, Friday, above 284.01 by a 1% margin. In other words, 286.85 Friday settlement or higher should then yield that 414.49 all-time high within as little as three to five months. And that's why I say having closed above 191.39, we just might reach 4 1449 by the end of the year. Uh, even a daily settlement of 286.85 uh, is a tentative, actionable buy signal. I don't know why I'm spending so much time on that right now because we've certainly backed off as anticipated, holding below 282.85. I maintain a one to two week target at 249.02. So I've got a simple trend line coming up today at 266.68, and that is an intraday support level. If we break 266.68, I think you should expect 262.48, which is uh, right about here on the chart. And there's nothing more than a Fibonacci level over the last couple of weeks extremes. It may contain daily selling pressures. I'll say that if we close today below 262.48, we should within a day or two of that test the targeted 249.02 channel bottom, where at 249.02, we can bottom out for the week itself, even through next week, turn back up into the 280s again within two to three weeks of testing 249.02. It would be a settlement below 249.02 that would then indicate the low 190s, as I mentioned earlier, within probably three to five weeks. And so as I've been mentioning, and as we've been testing the low 280s, you can, uh, two things, reach for 250 out of the money puts that don't expire for at least a couple of weeks. And that's been the play now 
for the last week, and that is beginning to materialize. Or you could also buy just the 190 out of the money puts that don't expire for at least three months. I give this up like a two to three month possibility. And so I would go out at least three months, probably more like six months to preserve your delta and eliminate the whole time decay element from the equation if you go out six months. It's not going to take six months to reach 191.39. I think by the end of August is certainly possible. And yes, if we close below 249.02 over the next three to five days, I give this about a three to five week objective at 191.39. And that is once again, that long-term channel top on the weekly chart where we could bottom out through the rest of the year. So if we meet that objective, you should uh, cover those uh, puts that you might have bought. Uh, and then in turn, uh, reach for 285 or 290 out of the money calls because once we test the low 190s, we can rotate back into the uh, up to this channel top again within a matter of several months. Discover the secret to investing success with Wicked Stocks, your trusted ally in navigating the dynamic world of the stock market. We harness time-tested charting techniques, previously only privy to professional traders, to deliver high-precision buy signals that eliminate the guesswork from your trading decisions. Earlier this year, when Eli Lilly was on a four-month free fall, our members were tipped off with a buy recommendation as the stock was merely testing one-year channel support. Fast forward seven weeks, and they were sitting on a delightful 28% return as the stock hit its targeted channel resistance, and it's still climbing. Then came Amazon. In mid-April, we signaled an important buy opportunity right as it closed above speed line resistance. Ten weeks on and the stock is cruising upwards, already netting a 30% increase. With Palo Alto Networks, our members were given the green light on a vital buy signal as the stock broke through its channel resistance. Just five weeks later, our target was hit with a profitable 20% return. By joining Wicked Stocks, you'll get access to two exclusive stock picks every week, alongside daily analysis in the SPY and Triple Q, as well as weekly insights into the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, and the Long Bond ETF, the TLT. Make your next move with confidence. Discover what it means to invest with insight. Don't wait. Start your journey today. Visit us at WickedStocks.com. Because smart investing isn't just about chance, it's about making informed choices. But getting back to the day itself, just want to emphasize, it would be a settlement today below 262.48 that would indicate the targeted 249.02 within just a few more days where we could bottom out not only on a weekly basis, but perhaps uh, through the rest of July and then turn back up into the low 280s again within several weeks. Now for the upside, I still have 275.11. Now that is a level that we opened above on Monday, broke it pretty early on. Uh, it is a decent still intraday resistance level. It is nothing more than the low of the high that was put out a week ago. We can tap out there on an intraday basis. If we push through 275.11, the 280.285 formation is likely intraday. And so for the day itself, 266.68 intraday support, that's, that's well suited for aggressive day traders. You could buy that in anticipation of 275.11, and you can sell 275.11, whether it's taking profits on a day trade or actually going short itself back to 266.68. Once again, pushing through 275. 511 does place 28285 in reach and that is a range of resistance that is also found on the weekly chart at 28401 where uh, if you're long I would suggest liquidating a long position and consider going short whether once again it's for the next you know week or two back to 24902 or for the next month or two back to 19139 once again it would be a settlement at 28685 or higher which is a 1% violation, really, of 28401. That would set this market on a bullish path. I would then expect, and I don't think I see, yeah, I have it shown here, within two to three weeks, 313.60 to 314.66. So closing above 284.01 by that 1% margin, the 313.314 handle then expected within two to three weeks where we can top out on a weekly basis. But as I said earlier, closing above this channel structure by the 1% margin should yield 414.49 over the next three to five months. I would I would liquidate any out of the money puts that you may have acquired over the last couple of weeks, last three, four weeks, as we've been testing this channel top. I would liquidate any out of the money puts that you may have acquired and in turn reach for 314 out of the money calls that don't expire for at least a month or a 415 out of the money calls that don't expire for at least six months. That would be the upside trade. You know, I think I have fleshed everything out pretty well. I'm going to leave it at that for Tuesday's Tesla report. Be back tomorrow, Wednesdays. Please click like, share, subscribe, and check out wickedstocks.com.